Well, hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here or you just found this video, my name is Mark and on this channel, we put cameras on the Blue Angels cruiser and we fly that and get some good footage. Sometimes I'll put cameras on the pits or if you are interested in building airplanes, I've been documenting the build of my Zenith 750 Super Duty on this channel. So in this video, we are going to fly the Blue Angels cruiser. And I wanted to go up for a flight in this airplane because I am switching from knots to miles an hour. In my cruiser, I have installed the Dynon HDX EFIS screen. And with the software and the screen, you can select if you want your airspeed to display in knots or miles an hour. When I first built this airplane, I selected miles an hour because that's pretty much what everybody in the home built world uses. So after a while, I just started thinking that everything in aviation is referenced in knots, except the home built world. It's always miles an hour. So I wanted to be like the rest of aviation. And I went into the Dynon and I selected knots instead of miles an hour. And that's how I've been flying this airplane for the last year or so. The problem with that is I can never talk to anybody about performance numbers because I'm always referencing knots and their mindset is they are always referencing miles an hour. So I've decided to switch this back to miles an hour and join the rest of the home built world in using statuate miles instead of nautical miles. So I'm gonna switch this over to miles an hour and then we'll go up and fly and we'll see what kind of performance numbers we get. I'm going to show you how easy this is to do on the Dynon. So I'm gonna hold the camera in one hand and work the buttons with my other hand. If you go to these two buttons right here, we'll hold both of those in just for a second and that gets us into the setup menu. And we can use this little scroll knob here to scroll through the menus. I'm gonna go down to system setup. And then once you're where you want, you just press the button. You'll see another menu come up and I'm going to go on measurement units. And I'm gonna hit the button again. That takes me over here to speeds and you can see that I have it in knots right now. I'm gonna click the button again just scroll up to miles an hour, click the button to finish, and then hit exit. That's it. Now it's in miles an hour. All right, I know some of you guys saw this. As I was editing the video, I saw on the screen, or on the Dynon screen, that I also had to go one step lower under distances and select statuate miles instead of nautical miles. So I've already done that. Let's go fly. Message. All right, guys, I think you can hear me now. Looks like a nice morning for flying. Of course, I forgot my sunglasses again. I've only flown once since I've been back from the Zenith fly-in. Brighton Airport, which is just 20 miles south of here, had a really nice fly-in. I think it was the next weekend after the Zenith fly-in, so I flew down there and had some fun for a while. But that was the last flight I've done in this airplane. When you're building an airplane, you just don't get out flying as much as you'd like. <laughs> Even the pits, I don't fly the pits a whole lot, I don't fly this airplane a whole lot, because usually when I have time, I'd rather be in the hangar building. But a nice morning like today, it's certainly great to get out and go fly. Right now I'm climbing out at 80 miles an hour at 1,200 feet, there's 1,300 feet a minute. That vertical speed will start to go down the higher I get. 
Price traffic, set my Delta, left turn, departing south, Price. I positioned this camera over the passenger seat, so it's pretty much right where a co-pilot would be. So through this camera, maybe you'll get the, the view of what it would be like uh, flying in here. I don't have my iPad turned on because I don't really need it. And also, that's uh, four flight I have set to knots in there, so I'll have to change that also. So just right now, we're doing 96 miles an hour, 700 feet a minute. And that's at 28.60 on the RPM. Clear, Travis. Southern Lake Zulu is turning final for 182. Now, one of the other things, too, is this has a, an outside air temperature probe on it, which is on the bottom of the airplane. And right now, it's indicating 52. And before I took off, I looked on the... Uh, online and it was 43 degrees outside so this is looks like it's about 10 degrees off and that could be because of the hot exhaust air maybe it's flowing over that so that might uh, affect the true airspeed indications just a little bit but let's go uh, here let's do this let's uh, level off here and I'm going to go up to 2800 rpm because that's the max continuous that we can fly at and we'll see what we get here. Try to trim it out as best as possible. So right now it's telling me my density altitude is 3,300 feet. I'm doing 114 miles an hour. True airspeed is 121. <laughs> So right now, indicating 116, true 121, ground speed's 102, but that doesn't matter, that's just uh, some headwind there. Alright, so it's looking like it's true and out at about 121 miles an hour, indicating 116. Now let's go on the opposite end of the spectrum here, and we'll see how slow it goes. Lincoln County Traffic, Piper, 7 We'll go full flaps, and where's 49, 44, 42, 41, we'll see what it actually breaks at, it's 32 right now, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 20, there, it disappeared at 20, and it still hasn't, hasn't broke yet. We're kind of in the stall right now, it's kind of mushing down. But, so I guess the airspeed disappears on the dyno at 20. <laughs> it went to 20 and disappeared. It's a pretty low stall speed. But let's do this a little bit differently now. Let's just see if I can maybe pull up a little higher and see when it actually breaks. Yeah, right at 20, it disappears and then it kind of breaks. Here we go. Pick some brake rudder in there. But now, let's see what, uh, here, we're at 2,800 feet. Let's just level off here. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna bring the power back and just kind of do slow flight. We're still in full flaps. So let's uh, let's just maintain 30 miles an hour. How's that? Obviously, that will take some power. I'm going to try to level, stay level at 2,800 feet, about 30 miles an hour. And the airplane's fine here. I can trim up a little bit more and get it about hands off. That's 33 miles an hour. Pretty close. Do a turn to the right. It does require rudder for the turn. It's 32 miles an hour, just maintaining level. True airspeed says 33. Actually climbing just a tad here. 
All right, let's try to turn to the left. Starting with that rudder. It's 28 miles an hour. Level flight. Flying just fine. Doesn't mind going this slow. 29 miles an hour, level flight. True airspeed is at 31, it says. And again, that might be just a little off because I think that outside air temperature probe is indicating a little bit warmer than it actually is. It's saying it's 48 degrees right now. It's pretty close to probably what it is here. Might be five degrees off. 30 miles an hour. Turn back to the north here. Kind of lock that power in. That seemed to be perfect right there. So if you really wanted to go slow and sightsee, you know, you're close to the stall, but you could fly it on like 32, 33 right now. And it's flying around just fine. Once you get it trimmed out, it doesn't take much to fly. You can almost fly it hands off, just kicking the rudder a little bit to uh, get around the turn. We're definitely going slow. All right, enough of that though. Let's go, uh, let's see what some other uh, speeds we can get here, which would be normal, maybe not full max continuous power, but something we might do if we're just kind of flying local. Let's do 2600 RPM, because that's an RPM I would normally fly if I'm just flying around here. You know, not going anywhere, just sightseeing. Let it accelerate. I'm at 3,000 feet right now. Density altitude, 3080. It's going uh, just about 106 miles an hour, 108. 109. So about 109. 20, well, that's a 20. So let me bring that power back. It kind of creeped up a little bit. 2600 RPM. Level flight, let's call it 106 miles an hour. Now let's do 27. And by 27, I mean 2700 RPM. All right, there's 2,700. Let's just see if it's going to accelerate anymore. 100 and between 100 and 809. Kind of settling on 109, it looks like. So there you guys go. If you want to know what my cruiser, how fast he goes. Those are some speeds and power settings. Well, hopefully you guys like that kind of video where I give you some performance numbers. If you're a potential builder or a current builder, or maybe you're even flying your own cruiser right now, it just gives you some numbers to compare and also to maybe judge the performance uh, on the airplane that you might want to build. Now, a lot of people do ask me if the fairings that are on this airplane contribute to an increase in speed. And I really don't think they do. Now, theoretically, they do clean up the airframe and reduce drag, so they should increase the speed a little bit, but I don't think it's anything that you're going to notice on your airspeed indicator. I think the real benefit of these fairings is just the clean, finished, professional look that it gives your airplane. Now, we have all of these fairings available on kitplaneenthusiast.com. We have complete fairing kits available for the Super Duty, the Cruiser, the Stoll, the 701. We have seats available. We have uh, steel braided hose kits available for brake lines and fuel lines. A lot of good products available on there. All the little bit of money I make from the website does help support this channel. So I do really appreciate when you guys order from the website. Well, that's all I have for you on this video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting the notification bell, and then give the video a thumbs up if you don't mind as it does help YouTube kind of promote the channel a little bit. We'll see you again on the next video.